ओके सो गाइज यू एवरी वन माई ऑलरेडी नो द टर्म कॉल ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम राइट सो लाइक इन यूर लाइफ टाइम यू मस्ट हैव यूज एट लीस्ट वन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम राइट सो कैन एनी वन टेल मी लाइक वॉट ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम यू हैव यूज टिल नाउ लाइक विंडोज और समथिंग एल्स लाइक दैट actually we are using only windows only run okay 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 so do you know about what is basic def- basic definition of operating systems yeah yeah okay okay can you tell me <laughs> okay okay no problem i i will tell you like so so operating system is the set of programs containing instructions that coordinate all the activities among computer hardware resources okay so basically what we do like let's take example of your windows only and we will have a laptop so in that laptop you will have some hardware like some cpu some memory and some hard some storage device will be there right so operating system will be deployed on top of that hardware and it will start consuming those resources to carry out the processes which will be required for you let's take example like if you want to run paint application so paint will need some resources right so paint will be the kind of one set of program uh, installed in your operating system and that will be using resources uh, which are uh, ac- which are into your laptop so this is how so i can say operating system is the set of programs containing instructions that coordinates all the activities among the computer hardware resources so not just the paint i would say there are so many applications you will find uh, in your operating system not just uh, let's take example of you might have uh, you might be a uh, found of a games right so game is nothing but a set of program which will be running on your laptop or on a windows system and that will be using your hardware so this is the common definition i would say uh, for operating system okay what happened okay so today uh, it's not just linux like what we are trying to learn in our devops training session is like what tools uh, what skill set you will be requiring to be a Uh, average a good enough devops engineer so linux is one of the aspect from devops domain that you should have at least a good hands on on that operating system so uh, let me tell you the operating systems like you uh, like as you said like you have just used windows but there are so many operating systems available in market like windows is there then uh, if if someone is using macbook then mac os is there uh, and the third one those two are pro- proprietary softwares like right those are owned by some company but there are some open source uh, operating systems systems as well there like that is unix and that from it comes linux so linux is kind of open source operating system so uh, anyone know what is open source what terminology uh, uh, like what is the basic definition of open source like if you have open source software if you have open source anything open source can you can anyone tell me about that yeah um, open source means we cannot pay to right we can use easily with free sorry i mean open source means we can uh, without uh, any need not to pay that uh, uh, certain amount or not we can easily to work with that uh, open source right so simply we can say open source is nothing but it is free to use you don't you will they will not charge you a single penny to use that particular uh, package or a software so operating system also we can take it as software only so there are operating systems available in market those are open source like their source code is also available uh, on internet like you can get that source code you can tweak according to you want and you can create a new software out of it or you can add more new features to those uh to that source code so this is how open source code works so there are so many operating systems available in market like 
one of the famous open source operating system i would say that is linux there are in a, in after in linux there are so many uh different distributions but we will talk about those distributions as well but just i want to let you know like linux is the open source open open source operating system uh so now coming to uh devops and linux so it's not like ki uh uh 100% uh, you should learn about linux like it's depend on organizations i would say like uh if your organization is using windows as a base machine to run their application so definitely you'll have to learn windows over there but now it is like i would say like almost 95 95% organizations clouds are using linux only like they are free to use uh they are easy to use uh they can use anywhere like on networking level uh on in a distributed manner or you can have multiple users can access that operating system at a time so because of this features so linux is kind of uh famous nowadays uh in a it domain okay so as i said again like linux is a beautiful and strange kernel which runs everywhere as i said runs everywhere that is i can say like it's not just on it will not just run on single computer or not on a laptop but it can run everywhere like it can run on your network you can it can run, it can be run somewhere else and you can access that os from there uh, so like that so it powers your servers clouds pipelines smartphones and so much and more like nowadays we are using android phone what it is it is also a linux machine only like it's it's a base os is unix from unix only uh android has come right you might know like correct me if i'm wrong in this like okay am i correct right smartphones are also open source software like android is open source software is it right yeah yes sir okay 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 so uh if you are going to be a, do if you are going to be doing a devops in a company that uses linux to run applications and servers then definitely you will have to need to know how to use linux terminal uh, some basic uh, top level commands so you can do many things like so it's not like you should be a nowadays uh, uh, definitely you can have expertise in that particular linux domain only you can do a system administration but for at least for being a devops uh you should able to use linux terminal and do this following things like creating and editing files running programs managing users groups and permissions understanding where programs and system files are kept so this is something sometime called linux directory structure definitely we are going to talk about linux directory structure uh in next slide so configuring net network connections and firewalls uh installing and configuring softwares building and compiling software Uh, monitoring program and processes using some commands like top are there we will talk about those commands as well in our session and automating all those things using a uh, some scripting uh, language like bash so at the end we are going to have hands on on shell scripting so um, i hope you will enjoy uh, this lecture and you will get lot you will get to know lot of things about linux not in a deep level i would say but at least you will be able to uh use linux uh kind of efficiently in terms of devops definitely if you want to go into depth into that i will definitely recommend you to do a rhca certification where you will get a, a deeper knowledge of that linux but in today's session we will talk about linux with respect to devops only so i hope uh, you are getting my point right yeah um so today's agenda will be we will have introduction to linux then we will compare linux and windows uh we will be installing linux like it will take much time like uh, we will be installing linux like we will be uh, i i think many of have already used virtual box they must have uh, installed a linux machine like centos or ubuntu on their virtual box right but uh, i don't know about palak like abhishek 
not join not join but uh, he like he would have to learn from scratch like same for datta i guess right so palak like what's your background like you are from uh, technical domain or what palak okay no problem okay so i will just uh, sh show you the instruction sets to install centos 9 on virtual box like those steps i already uh, kept in word file and at the end of this lecture i will share that word file uh, with all of you so those who are not uh, configured centos 9 on virtual box set so they can follow those steps and they can uh do it easily and if something if some issue comes in so i'm i will be available on whatsapp uh to solve those errors and issues okay fourth point will be we will, once we will be installing once we'll be done with our linux system we will talk about command line interface like this is the one uh, uh, every devops should have a good hands on and command line interface then we'll talk about file system hierarchy standard in linux that that, that Uh, in previous slide we talked about that linux directory structure that is nothing but file system hierarchy standard then uh now the actual hands on will be started from these points like basic file system management task uh we will talk about uh piping and redirection uh in a linux then we will talk about, then we will have a hands on on vi editor and acd uh then we will have some system administrator tasks that we should know like debugging skill and everything uh they will then we will talk about network and security administration like on a network level how you can administrate using commands that we will do hands on on this particular part and finally we will have a uh, a brief session on shell shell programming so we will try to cover all those points which you should know uh, while writing a shell programming if you have already a background of any programming language like java or python it does anyone having background of uh, core java or python something else or in your curriculum you must have learned about for loops switch uh, if you have started with c programming so you must have learned those things like for loop uh, variables uh, switch then while loop uh if else statements uh if else conditions uh so the same thing is there in shell program just the syntax is changed so we will talk about all those terminology and how to write code uh for those things so i hope you are getting what i am trying to convey am i audible to you guys Yes, Ron. You are audible. Okay, 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 okay. You can at least say okay, so uh, it will be a uh, interaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I am from the CS background only. I know some of the part of uh, Python and Java. Okay, okay. So you are, might have know about those for loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For loop, loop uh, variables, while loops. Yes, yeah. So same will be in shell programming. Nothing is different. So being a programmer, it's not like uh you should uh like it's not like uh if you currently working on java and uh, now in next iteration uh you will have to be uh now you are going to working on python so syntax is different but the creating a logic and the basic uh framework of any programming language is same like for loop will be used in shell programming that same will be in java that same will be in, in your python same will be in your javascript in same in go lang as well so that is not that will not change that is the basic of any programming language so it's just to think like how logically you write the scripts you getting my point right okay like a uh, syntax remains same and we should write it as the logic syntax will not remain same there will be slight change in syntax but the okay. logic like if you yeah. want to uh, background there is so much background okay If you want to uh, write a for loop, 
uh, th there is some logic. I'll I just tell you like uh, there are hundred numbers, so you want to print them one by one. So definitely you are going to use for loop, right? Uh, so to, yes. to pick to pick any language, yes. uh, there will be a syntax change only, but the logic will be the same. Okay. Okay. So uh, okay, let's start it. Okay. Just a moment. So now we know Linux is a self-sufficient operating system based on Linux kernel. Okay, Linux kernel. Does even anyone know what what do you mean by kernel? Okay, so let me tell you. Okay, so we talked about there will be a set of programs, right? What we talked about definition of operating system. We are just linking all those things. So operating system is a set of programs containing instructions that coordinate all the activities among computer hardware resources. So set of programs will be running and will take resources from computer hardware. OK, so so there must be something in between of them that is helping out to that uh, helping out that particular service or process to consume that that much resource, right? So that in between that is nothing but your kernel. This so kernel is the software interface. Okay, so kernel is the software interface, uh, which will be communicating between your computer hardware and all your set of programs. So here also, uh, Linux is also based on kernel only. Okay, so. Uh, but this is the name is the Linux kernel. So Linux kernel is the core component of Linux OS system and it is the core interface between a component of hardware and its processes. Now you're getting my point. What is kernel, right? So in interview or if anyone does ask you about kernel, so you should able to answer it like, yeah, this is the software interface uh, which communicates between uh, all the processes and the underlying hardware. Okay. And if you want to find the kernel version, so this is the command like you name hyphen and I will uh, uh, when we start doing hands on, I will type this command and will show the output of the kernel version of that particular OS. OK, so you getting my point, right? Yes, yes, yes. OK, so. So this is the one, so the features. Uh, not so mandatory, but I would say like no constant rebooting like you. You might have seen in Windows like whenever you install some application, it always ask you for restarting your Windows, right? Right, so but in case of Linux, you won't need to you, you don't need to do any constant rebooting like you can uh, install any application or you can remove any application. It will not ask you for reboot. Another thing is like in Windows. Uh, we are just comparing so you will get to know all these features in Linux, right? So in Windows you have seen you might have seen like you install some application, right? Let's suppose you have installed Chrome. Uh, but there is no option in Windows like you can stop that particular application for uh, some time. Either you can directly uninstall it. Uh, this is the option I can see in a Windows, but in case of Linux, definitely you can start any application or stop any application or a service uh individually not entire thing but if you want to stop chrome service you don't need to uninstall it you, you can simply stop that service some using some uh, linux command and that's it uh downloadable application this is the third feature like and we are coming to windows like what you do in windows like you download some application first from browser right uh, you get that file first and then you click on that and then you do click next 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 to install that file so here it is so simple like uh, in a one click uh, command, you can download and install that application together with a single command with the help of tools yum and apt. We will talk about yum in our uh, later uh, slides of our session. Definitely we will talk about yum. There is a, but does anyone know like uh, what is the full form of yum?
if not that, that's not a problem we will i will tell you that full form of uh swap space so swap space it's kind of you can think like definitely uh, in interview uh they will ask you about swap space from linux so you'll have to answer it in this way like any os need some ram right let's suppose your hardware like your laptop is having 4 gb of ram okay uh and all processes consume ram only like ram is nothing but a random access memory for temporarily uh, that particular process store some data to ram uh, till uh, it's getting executed once the process will be executed the ram will clean that data right this is the common uh, working of ram right so in the case of linux what happens like in case you have a 4 gb from your located to your os that that is fine but sometimes like what happened in your windows as well we see like our computer gets hanged because of over utilization of ram right so in case of linux what it gives you extra feature that is swap space so it will be not just having a ram but it will have a swap space along with it like if you are allocate 4 gb of ram to your linux machine uh, then you will it will create a, uh, at least a half of uh your ram size that is if 4 gb then it will create a 2 gb of a space in your hard disk it will create that so if any process runs out of memory so it will start using that swap space uh that particular 2 gb of space so this is how it will handle your overflow of running processes and data so swap space you getting my point right what is swap space okay so when now coming to uh exact terminology so ram is physical mem physical memory right so when any operating system runs out of physical memory it will start using this swap space which it can we can be uh say it as a virtual memory for a swap space okay any doubt so far in the features uh swap space what is swap space and all Okay, okay. I take it as a no. Okay. So next is Linux distributions. So uh, there are so many distributions are available in market like Debian. Uh, I will show you the how Ubuntu works. Uh, there is there are two distribution upstream dis distributions are Debian and RHEL. RHEL is a Red Hat enterprise uh, one. Uh, from RHEL you will get CentOS and Fedora from debian you will get ubuntu not just they, these are not just limited to these names there are so many distributors like you can say kali, kali linux then uh, centos kia kiali uh, so just note down this question like uh, uh, in a next session you have to come come up with all the linux distributions i will ask you everyone like what are the linux distributions are available so far in the market okay Linux root, uh, not like that, but uh, who invented Linux? The name, the guy name, the, the name of that guy was Linus Torvalds. So uh, who, uh, that person invented this Linux uh, like by while doing some project work for his university. So, but, but again, Linux is also having some base that is a Unix. So Unix operating system is the base for any uh, open source operating system. Like you go for Android, you will find base operating system is Unix. Same for Linux, Unix. Okay. We'll not go into Unix like, like we don't need to uh, uh, ha to have a hands on on Unix. We will talk about Linux only like as we are moving around Linux uh, machines only for our DevOps domain. Okay so this is the one now comparison we already done with windows like windows is proprietary it is not free to use you have to pay uh, some amount to purchase a license to use windows linux is open source and it's free to use okay uh case sensitivity linux file system is case sensitive case sensitive like you can't uh, create file system with uh cam uh, with alpha like uh capital letters uh, your wordings will be uh, small letters only in case of linux windows file since file system is in case in case insensitive like you can 
have a camel case you can have a uh, capital letters you can have a small letters anything it will kernel type there are uh, three kernel types like monolithic is there uh, monolithic is there okay one is monolithic and another is micro kernel so uh, monolithic means it uses will not go into kernel type like but i will tell you the definition of monolithic like uh, the kernel which we are using in linux it uses clam common platform to allocate resources to uh, each and every uh, process but in case of micro kernel it creates uh, parts itself to allocate uh, to allocate a separate resources to, to separate process so in that case what happened in case of monolithic definitely there will be over flooding like it using common platform uh, uh, it is trying to allocate resources from that platform only to all those processes uh, but in case of micro kernel what it does like uh, it will divide your resources according to your processes first and accordingly that will all allocate memory or uh, not memory uh, resource to that particular process so the communication between between those these two process will be smooth enough in case of kern uh, monolithic kernel type that uh, sometimes the uh, communication between uh, processes never be smooth efficiency definitely linux is lightweighted uh, machine so you will find that linux is more efficient than that of windows uh, path separator linux use forward slashes we will talk about that uh, file hierarchy system in that you will see that for forward slashes we are using to create a directory structure in windows you might have seen like c colon slash in some directory then slash some directory then slash so it uses backward slash uh, as a path separator security linux is highly secure uh, like you will not uh, get a issue of virus in case of linux but definitely windows is prone to uh, virus and there there will need and there we will need and antivirus this is one of the aspect i'm saying but there are so many aspects like in in linux we can configure firewalls we will talk about firewall in our later slide of session but uh, that can be done in case of Linux. So we can tighten the security at OS level only. Any doubt so far in uh, comparison of Linux and Windows? And guys, you can uh, let me know like if I'm going so much fast so I can slow down. I uh now i will uh walk you through through steps to install centers on virtual box so same you can follow because if we do it on live like it will take around at least uh half and one one hour at least one hour it will take to install everything so it's better to skip i will just show you the steps i already capture all those screenshots so uh you can link all those screenshots like how is the working of sent uh installation of centers on virtual box okay let me show share that file now okay so uh first thing is you have, will have to install virtual box on your machine so this is the link let me show you the link as well okay so from here you can uh download a virtual box according to your base operating system like definitely you are going you are using os so you will go with windows host just click on it it will download it for you just install it and then next will be you are able to see my screen right yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. next point is centos 9 so uh, so this is the mirror uh you just search for centos 9 iso it will uh, guide you through this URL only. You just have to download this particular ISO uh, to boot CentOS from your virtual box. So once everything is downloaded, then um, I will definitely share this word file at the end of this lecture. Once that is done, so the next part will be just open your virtual box. Let me tell you right away here. So you will be clicking on new uh, button once you open it. Just type it over here. What you are uh, just give a name of game. Just give a name to your virtual machine. So CentOS will be the machine. Here you can select a uh, image. Uh, this which I have downloaded, and then just click next button. 
uh, here you can configure username like uh, let me configure like password just remember this password host name can be the same just click on next button you can allocate ram and uh, cpu over here uh, like this you can as an in a runtime also you can change it uh, that's not an issue then click on next you can also look at hard disks like minimum 20 gb uh, not minimum 20 gb but average size i would say we can allocate 20 gb to create a virtual hard disk once this is done the next button then click on finish so once so now you will coming to your screen so you will be seeing your centos machine virtual machine is in power of mode so just, just click on right click and click on start button and select this normal start okay so it will power of your vm uh, for you so you might have uh came across you must you will came across this particular pop up like it will ask you for iso again so just click on this button and select it iso over here again and then click on mount and retry boot or retry boot but button now you can see you will see this screen you just click on you will find this option you can op find the uh, get this option by using arrow up and down arrow key button uh, just select install centos streamline and click enter It will take some time. Uh, Let's just wait for two, three minutes. It should pop up. Once that is done now, so. You will see this screen. Hmm. Now just select. Uh, something happened. Select English. Click on Continue button. Uh, 
know something happened. There is some issue with my laptop. I am not able to. Let it be so. So once uh, you select language, just uh, you will have to click on this capture. Then only you will be able to uh, do changes uh, in your in that particular virtual box session. OK, uh, once that is done, it will just click on continue and then you will find this screen like so whatever you uh, see this red color option like installation destination automatic partitioning and root account disable so just click on this installation destination it will show you the disk virtual hard disk which you have created earlier uh, like this so just click on this and then click on done button so uh, so this the red mark will be gone so same for root password so click on root password once you click on root password so This is the user creation. Uh, just click on root password. You will able to see the option why it is not working. same just click on root password you will they it will ask you to enter some root password like just and remember that password because that password you are going to use uh, at the time of login like uh, if you want to do sudo su or anything uh, that you will done same just create user also here uh, so everything is done. just click on begin begin installation and it will install everything for you once it is completed just reboot the system and then you will be able to see the screen like whatever name you have given as a username. I just click on that, enter your password. Uh, and that's it. like that, like this, you will be able to see. Let me show you this now. So this is the something has happened. OK, let me stop my machine first. What is happening? So you'll able to see this screen, okay?
same it's for ubuntu we can do this But now you know, right? Uh, how to uh, what I say? How to run any Linux distribution using VirtualBox? So these are the steps only you can follow. There is some issue uh, with my VirtualBox only. Like I'm not why I'm not able to. Uh, okay. So coming to next point, I will sh share you this word file. Uh, to everyone at, at the end of this lecture coming to next point. So. Let me just tell you some. Um, what I can say. Uh, some basic terminology, so uh, uh, let me how I can tell it. OK. So do you know about this great hard disk? OK, how hard disk works? There are. There is some disk in that it runs it. Uh, uh, like it revolves in that hard disk only. That is why you uh, get the noise, uh, get the sound of that only revolving. There is some uh, revolution ongoing in that hard disk, right? So this is the hard disk. This is nothing but the CD, I would say. So in in that hard disk, you will find some sectors in the the next part is sector so on in the sectors only your information is getting stored and from that sectors only your hard disk reads the data okay so in case of operating system how it works so whenever you start your windows you see some black screen right it it's it is doing something over there right so what it is doing exactly like it is trying to find operating in which sector operating system is installed on your hard disk Okay, so it will try to find that first. So that how it is fine. It uses master boot record. So uh, there is a term called master boot record in any operating in any operating system. You will find it. So in that uh, it stores the information about where the where actually that operating system is stored on which sector in that hard disk. So with the help of that, uh, with help of some bootloader, then MBR. So who takes the information from that MBR? So there we call this bootloader. So there will be a bootloader. So you might have seen that that black screen on your Windows at whenever you start, <coughs> whenever you click on power button, the first screen you will see that is a that is the black screen. What it does like it's basically a bootloader. That bootloader finds a a location of your operating system on that sector from your hard disk. Like you. You see the option like this is booting some hard disk. So not nothing but it is trying to find the location of that operating system on your hard disk in those sectors. So MBR is the responsible for for storing that information and bootloader is responsible for to booting your operating system. So uh, so Linux also we use some bootloader. So by default grub 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 uh, grand unified bootloader is available for Linux uh, that bootloader uh, trigger ups. That bootloader boots your operating system from your hard disk by finding its location. 
using MBR that is uh, master boot record. Okay. And same, you must have read about UEFI on that black screen whenever you start your Windows. UEFI, Unified Extensible Framework Interface. Okay. So that is again, uh, that is a interface which gives signals to your bootloader. Then bootloaders give signals to your MBR. The name, then bootloader finds the location of your operating system and it boots your operating system. So this is the uh, way to boot any operating system on your hardware. OK, so you will definitely find UEFI in your uh, windows. Whenever you click on power button, you will see the screen. You will see that word on your black screen. That is UEFI. So it basically what it does like UEFI triggers the signal to bootloader. So in case of windows, there is no grub. There is another bootloader they call that is SOC. SOC SOC framework bootloader. So that is used to boot your Windows machine and to boot your uh, Linux machine. Either you can go with Grub, which is by default bootloader installed along with your operating system. Uh, uh, but there is another one. It's called Lilo L I L O. So these two bootloaders are used. So if someone asks you about bootloaders, you can tell this definition. You are getting my point. Any doubt so far in this? Like how operating system gets boot on your hardware? Something is happened. I don't know what exactly. Yeah, it's working now. Command section you will find same in CentOS and Ubuntu. Uh, we I will walk you through all those file system commands on Ubuntu. Uh, let me click on. Any doubt so far in MBR bootloader? Uh, what is bootloader used in Linux? That is Grub, GRUB Grub, Grand Unified Bootloader. And another one is called Lilo, L I L O, L that is stand for Linux Loader. Okay, that you can explicitly install if you want to go with that. Okay, so now uh, once you OK, so once you install your Linux system, you are able to access it. So the first thing you first thing uh, you will see that is command line interface. So why I'm emphasizing on command line interface like like last time we talk about cloud computing, right? Uh, so in cloud computing, we create instances, right? We use those instances like uh, if anyone have anyone have missed that lecture. So you can find that recording in our group only like you can download it and you can get to know like a, what is cloud computing, uh, how DevOps and cloud computing uh, works together. OK, so whenever you will be creating now, you are able to see here uh, UI, right? This is a UI, but on cloud, you will not see this UI. You will just you will be just getting this single screen that is terminal only. So we'll have to be familiar with this uh, command line interface. So there will there won't be any UI which whichever instances you are going to create. Uh, on on any cloud AWS Azure GCP there are they, you can do that but usually we don't go for UI for those instances just to uh, minimize the resource utilization for that instance so solely those instances will be used to uh, run the application or to deploy some software we want right so this is how this is why command line interface is so much important to you guys rather than going into whole uh desktop ui we don't need the desktop ui you have to be uh 
uh, you have to have a good hands on on this terminal UI only. Like you should know all those commands uh, and everything. That's it. You don't need to worry about this UI. Like what you had. for practice purpose, definitely you should uh, learn in this way only by having a UI. So if you want, if you get some doubt, you can directly go on internet and search that doubt. But in practical, in real world scenario, there won't be a UI on for any instance. You will be directly accessing that instance uh, using some using SSH command. That's it. Uh, in our next iteration, we will be talking about AWS, right? So in that, I will cover like how you can access particular instance uh, that uh, that is created on that cloud. So, but there you will be fine. There will be no UI. There will just a CLI you will be seeing. And that is the reason Linux is used because on a network level, you can access it directly, right? So this is the one of the feature because of Linux, it's so famous in the cloud world. Like uh, you can uh, access it from anywhere. It is to, it is running somewhere, but through internet, through some command, you are able to access it, right? And not just that thing, but multiple users can access it at the same time by uh, logging into that server uh, from your local terminal. So we will correlate those things in our next session of uh, cloud. Okay. Uh, so same, you will be find command line interface in uh, what I say in your uh, CentOS as well. Uh, okay. So this is the command line interface. Now coming to next topic is file hierarchy system in Linux. So we talked about in Windows, you see drives like C drive, D drive, F drive. C is the main drive of your Windows where your actual OS system is installed, right? Uh, and what path is follow? It uses back backward slashes like C colon slash then your folder, then slash your folder, then slash your file. But in case of uh, Linux, any Linux system, you won't find any drive like structure like there will be a C drive. No, there will be directly a, a hierarchy from folder only like slash folders one slash folder two slash your file. So it will be using forward slash. Uh, there will be no C drive or D drive. There will be directly a directory structure. Like there will be a root direct, there will be a parent directory, and in that there will be a child directory like after slash. Okay. So let me show you the directory structure. Here. Oh, it is not in sodors. So coming to our slide again. So this is the command and interface of Saint of So now you can see like both are same. Just the distribution is different, Ubuntu and CentOS. Uh, but the way of working will be the same. Uh, okay. Mm, okay. So in command line interface uh, that is done now file hierarchy system. So you will find these directories after installation of your Linux uh, on your hardware. Like there will be a root directory slash and in that you will find all these directly slash bin slash boot dev slash etc and so on. Let me show you that here. You are able to see my screen, right? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's visible. So, this is the root directory. Uh, single uh, forward slash is the root directory. This is the parent directory. As you can see here, uh, this is the root directory. Under that, you will find other subdirectories like this ls hyphen lrts if i do it so so same here you can see uh user slash user slash srv slash opt slash mnt 
media and each directory is having their own uh, their own responsibility to carry out some operation okay so if we talk about slash bin directory let me show you that slash bin so here is the slash bin Oh, there is no slash pin in this. Okay. Yeah, there is slash bin. This is the slash, bin, which is routed to user bin. So slash bin, it contains executable files. Okay. That is used to boot and repair your system. So directories usually contain shells such as bash and chs, which provides a text based user interface for Linux as well as commands such as CPMV, RM, CAT, and so whatever commands you are going to learn. So th those are stored in this bin directory only. Exe those commands executables are in this bin directory only. Okay. And it is only help to uh, it have those files so that you can boot your operating system or in case of any disaster happens, you can restart it as well. And it will use this bin directory only. Like basically to boot operating system, bin directory will be used. Now the next is sbin. So it holds the binary executables files that only use for used by the root user. This directory contains the file required to boot the system. Again, same. So sbin also uh, keeps same data. Just the thing, uh, the whatever commands are there, which are belongs to root user only, like uh, shutting down machine. Uh, uh, like other user, you can do shutdown unless and until that is root user. So that will be a part of your SBIN only. Uh, next is home directory. Now you can see as we have uh, user called VBOX user, right? So its home directory will be stored here. So whatever you do with uh, so whatever files belongs to this user will be stored under this slash home slash vbox user. So, so as many as users will have uh, those home directories will be created over here. Like down the line, we will uh, create a users uh, and I will show you like how home directories are created for that particular user. Okay, then boot. So bin is the file is the location where uh, executables are uh, stored that are used to boot but there is another slash boot directory so there is another slash boot directory it will allow you to boot linux system the directory contains linux kernel which is core component of linux so we talked about linux kernel right so now you can link everything like whatever we discussed in last time it is going to be useful over here right so we know what is linux kernel it is the interface between your uh, uh, resources hardware resources and the processes so that linux kernel is stored here only it is installed over here only in a slash boot directory okay uh, next one is slash dev directory uh, let me show you now slash dev directory okay so so what you, uh, any doubt like am, am i going fast guys like just let me know uh, so i can slow down myself hello no no Rahul. it's fine okay. uh slash dev directory uh slash dev directory like uh, let's do lsblk just think like we created some 20 GB hard disk right at the time of installing the CentOS on virtual box, right? 20 GB hard disk that nothing but a volume 20 GB of volume is attached to this operating system where this operating system have installed everything so that volume attached. So if you want to see that volume, uh, you can see that under this uh, dev section only. So in slash dev only uh, you will able to see that file like sd1 like what like in case of uh, ubuntu we created 25 gb of hard disk so it is renamed as sda and that sda is being used uh, to store all these files so this this is stored in slash dev directory only so slash dev it contains the file system entries that represent the device attached to linux so if anyone asks you about where 
you will find the location of attached volume. So you will have to tell under slash dev directory only. You got it. You are getting my point, right? Yes, yes. Uh, we want to tell add that like uh, under slash drive. Yeah, slash dev slash dev sta one slash dev sta two. Uh, if I do lsblk now, so you will def you will get to know like lsblk is command. Yeah. Uh, and if I do df hyphen kh. Uh, now you can see here like dev slash sda three sda two. So out of our sda, which we created, it created one parent directory that says sda three, and it created another slash boot if i sda two. So it is using uh, that location only to store all those files. So you are getting my point, right? Slash y slash dev is important. Yeah, Rahul. So it's not just like 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 if you want mount uh, another volume. That volume also will have location in the slash dev only. Uh, okay. Uh, lib is a so lib is the another folder. It contains all shared libraries that are required by the program of Linux system. Okay. So it's not like. Uh, Shared, li shared libraries, I would say like, uh, let me give an example in this. What I can give example. OK, so whatever you have installed, like uh, right now you can see this Mozilla Firefox. So, so it's shared library will be stored here only. The Thunderbird, this is the Thunderbird email uh, application. It's shared library also stored here only. So from here only, whatever you will be installing, like by default, Python is installed over here, Python 2.7. So it's shared libraries install over here. This library will be used from your another directory called slash user uh, to run that application. So whatever you install or whatever is pre-installed on your Ubuntu, the, those packages like you can see, you can regulate this with your Windows machine as well. Like if you install something under C colon, you will find slash Windows directory under that. Uh, you will be finding your application is installed, right? Uh, so same happens with this slash lib directory only. Now coming to slash user, it contains all your user applications. Okay. Okay. So if you go into bin, all executables are over here. Like if I talk, if I print Python. So you can see this executable here and what it is doing. It is using its data from shared library, which is stored in your in your uh, slash lib directory, right? You can correlate it, right? The executables are in slash user directory and its shared libraries are stored in your slash lib directory. So all lab, all directories are interconnected to each other. OK, uh, another one is slash MNT. So in slash MNT, you will find MNT. You can take it as mount point. So in case if you mount extra hard disk to it, so you can mount it, mount that, mount that volume under the slash MNT. Not just, it's not like it is mandatory to whatever uh, volume you mount other than root is to be mounted to MNT only. Uh, but you can, and you can create a separate directory as well. Like you can have a slash data and you can mount that directory to there. But they have already given the slash MNT like you can use this. Otherwise, it's not mandatory to use slash MNT to uh, mount uh, other directories, other volumes, I would say. OK, now. Next is slash var. So. Oh, what happened? Slash var. So slash var contains variable data files. Like uh, you might have seen you print some logs uh, in your application, right? So in case if you install something like nginx, so those logs will be by default stored to slash var section only. Like you can find this cd log section. Uh, but just not application related logs, but system level logs are also stored here, like kernel level logs, krn dot log is file for kernel level logs. Then your system level logs, like uh, boot logs, like at the time of boot, what happens? Those will be printed to boot dot log file. So everything will be stored here only by default. You can change the location for your custom applications, but by default, 
the boot, booting process, the kernel process, those will be uh, syslog, like system level log, whatever happening with your system that will be under the syslog file. So if anyone asks you in interview, like if I want to uh, debug why my particular operating system is not working, like instance is not working. So you will have to go here only where slash where slash log section only under that you will find this is log in the syslog you will able to see what exactly happening happen with your opting system before crashing crashing it same you can check for your kernel sometimes kernel doesn't work properly so you can take check those logs here uh, in kirn.log section so these are the basic things but interviewer will definitely going to ask these things in your interview like they will not uh, uh, check you for your overall knowledge they will check you for your basic knowledge only like how you initiate your debugging debugging process to debug any part like that. You're getting my point, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, another is proc. So, so proc is nothing but if you if you do ps hyphen ef, so you will see the whatever processes are running in your Linux. So. Uh, their data, their metadata will be stored under this proc directory only slash proc. Proc is nothing but process. You can full form it as process, but <coughs> short, short form is given as proc. Okay. Uh, etc. Etc. Now, now coming to etc. Uh, it contains all your configuration files. Okay, these are the configuration files, kernel level configuration. So whatever configuration files needed to uh, run your operating system that are stored over here only. Like now we can relate kernel, uh, where kernel is stored. Kernel is stored under, uh, in your uh, in, in your boot folder, kernel is installed. Uh, okay, and its log files are stored in, in, in your, where, in your, uh, slash where slash log section, but and it's but its configuration will be stored under this slash etc section. Okay, so these all these you are you are able to uh, visualize these things, right? For a single application, it is using multiple directories. Like it is storing its configuration file under slash etc. Uh, it is storing its logs in slash where slash log section, and uh, and actually it is stored its uh, file is stored under a slash boot section. So now you can relate it like how these directories are interconnected. OK. Uh, now next one is lost and found. Mm, and I have some issue with my why I'm I'm not a pseudo user. What I did to my virtual box, I really don't know. But uh, so lost and found is like it allows you to recover files or data in the event of system crash or power failure. Uh, so don't take. Uh, it's like a backup the files, right? Yeah, not a backup. I would say if you delete something, you won't find in lost found. Uh, in case of crash. Or some power filler only, you will be able to get those files in Austin. Otherwise, you won't get it. Stability is something that is related. But, but there is no, there is so much background noise. Okay. So, uh, it's not like in Windows you will get recycle bin. Like if you delete something, uh, if you want to restore it, you can go to recycle bin and restore it. It's not like in Linux. Delete you delete it, it's deleted. It's not. Like okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, now next is slash root. So I have no permission to slash root. So you think it as slash root as a it's a super user of your operating system. Default will be the root user. Uh, in your in in your operating systems in CentOS or in Ubuntu. Okay. Uh, but what it will do? It will allows you. It will have. The soup it will be super user uh, which will have 
each and every access to your operating system you can do anything if you have root access like if you know the root password and all so okay and the slash temp like temporary if you want to store something like uh that should not be uh there for a longer time so you can put it in time in some in some day or uh once you stop your terminal uh the time like whatever data you are storing in time that will that will be gone like whatever temporary activity you do uh, that that you can store in slash time directly so this is the uh fhs system of uh, linux machine like file hierarchy system of linux so these are the directories like let me reiterate again okay Yeah, Rahul. Hello. Yeah. 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 Sorry for that. We can wrap this session today, Rahul. Tomorrow we will continue, right? Actually, nobody there. Surya is not there. Uh, what I can do, like, uh, we can uh, have this session again at 3 p.m. if everyone agrees to. Uh, actually, 3 p.m. is not there for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. you and you grish and me only <laughs> i didn't saw like so everyone yeah. is left yeah yeah actually